I'm Katie. And I'm Anoush. And we're students at Georgia Tech studying material science and engineering. And we're here to talk to you about polymer swelling. This may seem just like a diaper, but it's way more than that. It's science at work. Okay, aren't diapers just baby underwear? Yeah, but they're way more than that. I mean, think about all the functionality that goes into a diaper. Yeah, I, I guess diapers do smell nice. Uh, and they're also soft to the touch, which I would hope they would be, especially if the child's wearing it for more than six hours. Yeah, but what's the most important thing about a diaper? It's the ability to hold and collect water. Now, how does it do it? It all has to do with this pouch right here. As we pour 150 milliliters of water onto the kitchen towel and absorbent pouch from the start, we see that the towel is letting water spill out, whereas the diaper is absorbing it all. Based on project requirements, this makes sense. Though both are used for wicking liquid, kitchen towels are used primarily for small spills and do not need to store the liquid for long. Diapers, on the other hand, are expected to absorb and store liquid until it is replaced, which may be a long time. Different requirements allow for different cost-effective formulations. Kitchen towels are primarily pulp-oriented in designs to increase surface area. Diapers, on the other hand, use a functionalized macromolecule that gels up in the presence of an aqueous solution. Sample number one had no water added to it, but sample number two had 150 milliliters added. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, sample two is a lot thicker than sample one. It's also a lot heavier. The polymer absorbed water and expanded or swelled. Let's use a digital optical microscope to zoom in on this polymer swelling. Initially, we start with a few grams of powdered sodium polycrylate and add a few drops of water with a syringe. We can see how the water is absorbed into the polymer. Sodium polycrylate can absorb up to 100 times its dry weight in water. We can zoom in even more using a scanning electron microscope to observe the microstructure. In the left image, we can see dry polyacrylate. And in the right image, we can see the structure after water has been added and the polymer has swelled. When only a small amount of water is added, water is well absorbed into the polymer, and the water molecules are attracted to the polymer due to hydrogen bonding. The amount of swelling and the max volume of liquid that the polymer can intake is due to two key factors. The first one being the solubility of the liquid in the polymer, meaning how likely is the polymer to actually dissolve in this liquid? Does it enjoy dissolving in this liquid? Uh, for example, if the polymer likes to dissolve in water, it would be hydrophilic. You could think of solubility um, with a very key case, oil and water. They are not very soluble, so you could see the two layers separating from each other. The second key factor is cross-linking density. Polymers are these really long wavy chains which enjoy moving freely. However, cross-linking introduces a knot which basically connects polymer chains together, which restricts the movement. Let's look at this rubber band. Imagine this rubber band is two individual polymer chains which are uncross-linked. They are able to freely move and are not restricted by each other. However, if they are cross-linked and have a knot tying them together, all of a sudden, it, their movement is much more restricted. Now that we've learned about the key factors that impact water absorption, think about how you could design an experiment to determine how much water a polymer can absorb. Now we know that these polymers are used in diapers, but where else could they be used? Where else is water absorption and swelling really important? I mean, think about applications from automobiles to medication. Please check out our resource doc below. It has some engaging challenges and other resources to learn more about polymers.